let's move into reciprocals. This will be where we finish today, okay? Um, we, again, we know what these look like, right? But there are just two very simple ideas which we can express in an analytical, you know, algebraic way that will help us unpack what's going on. So, firstly, if I have a function, right, and I know it's equal to zero, then what will happen to its reciprocal? Well, it'll be the reciprocal of zero, which doesn't exist, right? Now, what that corresponds to on our graphs is you're pretty much going to expect a vertical asymptote, okay? Okay, so if you've got a function at zero at a particular point, then its reciprocal has a vertical asymptote. they're going to coincide at that particular point where it's zero, right? Then correspondingly, right, if my function is growing, if it's racing off with no limit in sight, if it's going to infinity, then what happens to the reciprocal? Well, it's on the denominator, that thing that's going to infinity, so therefore it's going to approach zero, right? So let's be a bit sneaky. Now, you have to be careful, am I approaching from above or below? That will depend on the sign of the whole thing. Let's use those two very simple building blocks and have a go at this guy. Y equals one over X minus two, okay? When you have a look at this, I've drawn X minus two as a component graph, right? So my reciprocal of this is gonna have a look at these important points, right? He's cleaning up, that's okay. So for example, here, Here's the first important point I notice. This guy here, right? The function is zero there. So when I think about its reciprocal, I ought to be expecting, well, I can't exist there, right? So I'm gonna pop a vertical asymptote through there. Are you okay with that? Okay, now, when you have a look over here, I'm going off to infinity, right? And there's no limitation on it, okay? So when I take the reciprocal of something that's growing, it's gonna come down to zero. Do you agree with that? So therefore, I'm doing that. Over on the left-hand side, I observe the exact same thing, but it's going to approach from the bottom because it'll be a small number, but it'll be a small negative number. Does that make sense? So I have this asymptote horizontally on both sides. Okay. Now these are the vertical and horizontal, <laughs> horizontal asymptotes you're already familiar with because of a hyperbola, right? But it's not just because it's a hyperbola, right? You're using this thought process to think about what the ordinates are doing. So now I'm going to graph the thing, right? Have a look over here. I've got a really, really big positive value. So that's why I'm coming towards here. I'm dropping down like a rock. But then as I go towards the left, towards x equals 2, the denominator is shrinking. It's vanishing away, right? So it's going to become 1 over 0 0.1, 1 over 0 0.001. It's going to skyrocket. That's what it's doing. Over on the left, same argument, but a couple of things I could note, right? I actually have numbers here, right? I actually have numbers. So for instance, see that? What's that intercept there? Negative. That's negative 2, right? So when I take its reciprocal, I should know what the intercept is. What's the reciprocal of negative 2? It's negative a half, right? Now I actually have to know where that is because I've said that's negative 2. So I've locked myself into a vertical scale. Do you notice that? So that's negative 2. There's negative one, so there's negative one or two. I have to pass through there, right? Like the visual has to make a basis on that argument. So therefore, let's give it, give it there. There you go. Right? And that's actually a critical point. If I'm saying that's negative two, then negative a half has to be there. It can't be somewhere else and be consistent with my vertical scale. Does that make sense? Okay, now standard hyperbola. That was a bit boring, okay? If you have a look at something like this guy, you see I've craftily chosen the graph that we just did over there, right? So let's just draw here is our component graph, and then we can do our reciprocal. Wait, so you can't... Oh, you could do that first. You already know what x, minus, x squared minus 2x is, okay? So now I'm going to approach this in the same way, right? I look at the points where my function, my component function, is zero. And there are two of them, which means I've got two vertical asymptotes, right? Let's draw them in. Oh, 
Okay. Now again, I'm going to look for my important places. Important places. So for instance, I actually know there's a stationary point here, right? And I can fairly easily work out its value, right? The x value is one. So what's the y value? What's the ordinate? I'm just thinking about the component function, by the way. Like I'm actually thinking about what is the coordinates? It's going to be one, and one take away two is negative one, right? So that point is one, negative one. The ordinate is the part I'm interested in. What's the reciprocal of negative one? It's negative one, right? So therefore, my actual graph is also going to pass through that point. And that's important to me. I've said it's there. Just like I said, this intercept was there, right? So, so far, so good. Oh, this makes so much sense. Yeah, you can see the behavior. You can understand the behavior now, right? OK, now let's just look, let's just look in here, right? What's happening? Well, I've got, uh, I've got, no, I don't have this situation. I have approaching 0, right? On each side here, my component graph is approaching 0. So if the component's approaching zero, what's the reciprocal of that going to approach? Approaching infinity. It's going to approach infinity, right? But be careful. I'm negative, yeah? Negative. So I'm approaching negative, negative infinity. Which, of course, we could have known by drawing regions. But because I'm approaching this in this way, I don't need regions, right? You're going towards negative infinity. So there is my graph. OK? Now, on the outsides of those regions, I can use the same argument that I have here and here, right? These graphs up here are going towards positive infinity, and there's no boundary on those. They're just going to go forever. Okay? So therefore, when you take the reciprocal of those, they're going to shrink. Right? They're going to come towards zero. So that's where my horizontal asymptote comes from. Right? You see, the denominator, that's my green graph. The denominator <coughs> is getting huge. So the actual graph, the reciprocal of that, is getting small. So that's how you get... Um, these graphs that are going to come down here. Now, I should really be um, <coughs> watchful for my points of intersection, but you can find those, they're not that hard. You're going to get these shapes here. Okay? So now you have another analytical tool for, well, why do I get this weird shape? Right? And it's like, think about the reciprocals. Think about how they're actually forcing themselves to behave. Okay? Now, one last one. Yep, perfect timing. And um, we'll do this really quickly. Um, we're going to do. <coughs> cosec x. Cosec x. And we're going to think it exactly the same way. Uh, let's draw it from um, Norton 360, we'll do. Norton 360. <laughs> Okay, so really quickly, let's crack through this because not too much time left, right? I will look for important points, right? Immediately, I see three important points screaming out at me. What are they? I've got zeros, right? I've got roots. I've got x intercepts. So, 0 degrees, 180 degrees, 360 degrees. The function, right, y equals sine x, which is actually what I'm envisaging here. Right? Sine x is 0 at all of those points. So that means when I take the reciprocal, I'm getting those vertical asymptotes. Yeah? Oh. I'm not the only one who's trying to talk over. <laughs> OK. Now, I've got those in place. That's great. Can anyone else suggest maybe some other important points on here? Yeah, let's have a look at those turning points, right? Now again, because you have the distinct advantage of knowing exactly where those turning points are, right? Number one, you've got an x value. Let's finish it. Namely, 90 degrees. 90 degrees, right? So what's the value there? What's the ordinate? What's the ordinate? It's one, right? What's the reciprocal of one? One. So therefore, my reciprocal function also passes through there. Then it's got to grow. Do you see that? Down here, my ordinate will be negative 1. What's the reciprocal of negative 1? Also negative 1. So therefore, you now have the pretty graph of cosec x.